some of my videos want some updates on all my cars that I have. Well, more so on my, my LS swap uh, 1986 Trans Am. Um, I'll walk out of here. I've got, I've actually got four vehicles uh, that are mine and all, every one of them is a little bit of a project in its own, but uh, I'll give a quick rundown on all four of them. So if you, if anybody that wants to hear any more information about each one, you know, let me know in the comments. However you, however you want to do it, but uh, I'll talk about each one a little bit, what's going on with it currently, and what my plans are with it, hopefully in the short term, but uh, if you watch my other video that I'll probably put up right before this uh, about my recent back surgery, I mean, things are going to be slow for a while, little while, so bear with me. But I'll walk out here. Um, I'm filming with a GoPro Hero 3. Um, it's just the case that come with it with the open back. I have ordered another skeleton case that's open on the side and then one of those real minimal cases that just cover the round that, that holds the outside of the camera but it's not here yet so I'm not sure how well the, the sound will be with this. I also ordered an external mic so that should help a little bit but uh, I'm sure some people have seen me do some ride along videos in this car which is my 1992 Heritage Z28. It's just a uh, more or less a stock car. I've got some sp suspension work, uh, poly rod, adjustable lower control arms in the rear, pan hard rod, lower control arm relocation brackets. It's a uh, 305 tune port 700R4 car. Uh, not a G92 car, but it does have a Posi 342 rear end swapped in it with aluminum drums. Um, hard top car. I think I'm the fifth owner, but I've had it for eight years now, this coming July. At one point I put, I repainted the front bumper and a fender. I put new stripes on it, which the car sits a lot in the sun, so it's starting to fade again. But uh, it's got clear corners, clear front markers, uh, holly adjustable fuel pressure regulator, a Corvette servo, uh, EGR delete. Still has a, it's got a three inch Magnaflow cat back, three inch Magnaflow cat. I'll go to the air boxes. Um, it's a heavy car. With me in it in a full tank, it's I think 3,600 pounds, 3,650, something like that. But it ran. I drove it up to MIR, MIR Maryland, Maryland International Raceway, I guess four or five years ago now, and drove, we ran 1440s with it at like 95 mile an hour, something like that. And I mean, it's that's not fast, but for a heavy 305 car, I mean, that's running right there with the tuned port 350 cars of the time. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. It's became my daily driver many times over it's been an awesome car to me and i keep debating on selling it here and there and every time i do my one of my daily drivers either, either gets totaled <laughs> or or something breaks which i'll get to here in a minute uh but i mean it's just been an awesome car it's got 274 no 270,000 miles on it as far as i know the original engine and transmission like i said i've had it eight years and other than, you know, some little things, making things with these cars. It's been a terrific car. I love it. Uh, eventually, it'll probably get an LS swap if I keep it long term. Which, it's it's up in the air right now. I want to keep it, but I don't know it, what's going to happen. But next, <clears throat> you'll see my, my supposed to be daily driver. Seems to always let me down. But it's my 2008... GMC Crew Cab Sierra, four-wheel drive. It's got a uh, the LH6 all aluminum 5.3, 799 heads, uh, 4L65E, and I think it's got 114,000 miles on it. I've had it just hit four years. Uh, I re 
replace my 2003 GMC Yukon XL that I had that had full bolt on uh, long tube headers off road live pipe. I had a Performer Belt 4L6E in it and a Circle D converter, and it got totaled. I bought this, I parted the Yukon out, so I'll keep it stock. And that has been the plan, but the truck decides it needs things done to it. <laughs> but uh, I got the truck, and it had a knockoff Flowmaster on it. But it was a two and a quarter muffler that was expanded to go over the factory two and three quarter pipes. So I had a leftover 14 inch case, three inch in, three inch out magna flow that I had from another project and some leftover three inch mandrel bins. And I built a, put the magna flow in it, fixed the pipes. And I put a China air intake tube on it with the factory air box still on it tinted the windows, put a tonneau cover on it, and more or less drove it. And then I think, oh, I put a vet servo in it. Drove it for about a year. I put the bigger tires on it, the 285, uh, 70, 17s BFG KO2s right after they came out, which they've been an awesome tire to quiet. Um, but I don't know if I really kind of want to pull the level out of it. It had a level already in it when I got it. So it's got a block in the rear, a bigger block in the rear. I think it's got the upper and lower brackets in the front. I can't remember. But it's got a really bad angle on the CV shafts. And actually both boots have busted now. So that's another thing. I kind of want to... Actually I want to pull the level out and get a set of like newer 20s for it and like stock size tires and put take the level out maybe do a two three two four whatever drop nothing drastic because it is a four-wheel drive i do drive it i don't off-road with it but i do use it as a truck and just make it easier for me and my kids and my wife to get in and out of but this is another one i've talked about selling uh last fall late last summer last fall uh the four original 4l65 died on me it actually I don't know what happened. I've never fully pulled it apart, but the it more or less locked up, and I got an awesome deal on a local rebuilt 65E from a 09, which that was a whole debacle itself because I did not know at the time that 08 had a different valve body than the 09 2010 65E. So I ended up having, after I had the transmission in the truck, I ended up pulling the original valve body out of my 08 transmission I had to swap it into the transmission that I had just put in the truck. That took a couple days figuring out what was going on, why it wasn't shifting, why it had all these codes. But uh, when it was out, I actually bought a budget Trailblazer, modified Trailblazer converter. So it's got a 2800 stall in it now. I've been driving it like that since the fall. Drove it. It runs pretty good. I've done a lot of tune changes. It's a little looser than what say a Circle D one would be it's for the same type of converter. Like I said, it's a cheap converter. I mean, it works. The ultimate goal, if I keep the truck, is to do an ADE swap. But it, when it happened, it was so sudden. Uh, my Trans Am had just busted a brake line. The C10 that I have, I had just bought. And I was having back problems still, and I really just didn't have the money to do a full ADE swap at the time. But like I said, it does have a converter. And then drove it up until early February of this year, knowing that I was getting ready to go out of work to have that surgery. And I think about a week or two before I went in to meet the surgeon, uh, number seven lift, lifter collapsed. You know, these engines have the uh, active fuel management placement on demand. This one does not have VVT like some of the later engines. So this one is a LH6. 5.3 but the number seven lifter collapsed i had had issues on and off for years with it throwing that code but after i got the truck not long after i had run a bunch of atf through the oil and switched to a good synthetic oil with a wix filter and turned it off in the tune i've had almost no issues up until now and i was hoping it, well when it happened in the past i could shut the truck off let it sit turn it back on and it would be fine and then i would change the oil and it would be good to go well, this time it didn't happen like that, and I ended up driving the truck for about a week or two uh, with it missing and carrying on because I had no choice. I was still working. 
I had to shuffle my kids around. Given I, I, I lived very close to, I worked very close to home, so I wasn't driving it much. And would just shuffle back and forth through town with it just to get me by until I was off work. And which now you saw my V28, I've been driving it. That's actually my daily driver currently. But uh, I hope to fix this thing. So yesterday, uh, it's April 22nd, I have my cam kit came in. I ordered a BTR Stage 3 V2 cam kit, truck cam, for this truck. I have not seen a whole lot of reviews on the, the new V2 grinds. I was going to go with the Stage 2 V2. And then I got not really talked into, but I had talked to a another guy on YouTube. He tunes a lot of trucks. I saw where he had done a dyno tune video of a truck just like this with the Stage 2 V2 and kind of commented back and forth with him. And he suggested since with the larger converter, I should be able to get away with the, the, v, the Stage 3 cam. So I said to hell with it. Why not? I mean, I was going to throw it in there anyway. And... So I'm hoping it will go good. Uh, a good friend of mine is going to come over and help me do the cam swap here in the next couple weeks since I still can't do a lot of bending or twisting from my surgery. Um, I had most of the other parts already, the lifters, the trays, push rods, and what have you for another engine that you'll probably see here in a minute that I was building for, for one of my cars. But So this truck will have a VTR Stage 3 V2 cam shortly. I still have manifolds and caps in the truck. Uh, hopefully later this summer I uh, plan to order uh, 178 speed engineering long tubes. I'm up in, up in the air if I'm going to buy their wide pipe. I might, but I'm really debating on building a whole new exhaust system for it and a wide pipe, but I may end up ordering their wide pipe and put mini bullets in the wire. Uh, I don't have emissions test in here, but a lot of inspection shops like to have a visual and in the past when I had that old Yukon, I had uh, uh, OBX or Speed Daddy or whatever it was, long tubes with the Y pipe with resonators. I never had an issue with inspection shops. And I mean, it obviously had no caps, but I never had an issue since it had something that physically sort of looked like a catalytic converter. So that may happen. Uh, also, I have a, I'm really debating on if I might change the whole exhaust system because I had a similar setup on that Yukon and it droned horrible once I put the long tubes on it at like 2,000, 2,200 RPM. And I eventually ended up putting a long bullet in the pipe and it helped, but I, I may just replace this whole system. I'm not sure yet. I've debated on putting a, a four inch system with a big diesel muffler and then the two little bullets, but I, I'm not sure yet. I really don't want it sounding too rowdy. I kind of want it to sound a little mellower, so we'll see. I don't want a whole lot of drone. But, uh, so we'll go back here now and we'll probably get bombarded by my, my dogs. But uh, I'll show you the other two jumpers and uh, kind of talk about them a little bit. That's Fred. That's Cammie. And they are nuts. Puppies! All right, so this is the car. A lot of you, I've had a lot of vi <laughs> views on this car. A lot of questions about stuff on the swap. Heck, these lights don't work in here anymore. So this is my 1986 Pontiac Trans Am. Um, I've, had, I've had this car for 15 years. It was my first car. Uh, it's got, when I got the car, it had a LG4 carbureted 305 with a 700R4 transmission. As you see, the car is a shelf currently. My garage is a disaster. Um, but anyways, it had 273 open rear. The car was a giant turd. I loved it though. I've got had a lot of good times with my friends in high school with it. Um, it's, it was a lot of fun. I, I love the car. It'll be with me till I'm dead and gone. Uh, actually, it'll probably be with my kids by that point. My oldest daughter has a huge love for this car. Um, I think I said earlier, back last summer, me and my oldest daughter were out for a ride in it. We stopped by a friend's house, and I lost all my brakes. 
a few years ago, if you look back in the, another video, I went racing with the car at Capitol Raceway in Maryland. That was when my Yukon got totaled on the way home that day, that evening. But I, I actually lost brakes then too on the racetrack and my master cylinder went bad. So it's got a fourth gen uh, 98, I think it's a 98 to 02 brake master cylinder in the car. Um, but it ended up being a metal hard line broke. And uh, metal hard line broke. And sorry, I thought my dogs were going outside. A hard line broke this go around. And like I said, it was last July. I was like, you know what? I'll get to it later. I just got this other truck I'm going to talk about. Got home like three days later is when the 60E went out of the big truck. So, you know, the, the car got put in the garage. I just haven't messed with it. And then all my back stuff happened and I'm not able to get down and mess with it. So it's on dollies, pushed to the side over here, you know, piled up with junk. It's become a shelf. I was out here the other week. I was doing some idle tuning on the car, but uh, it's got fourth gen leather seats, fourth gen center console. I uh, made a little gauge pod. It's got a air fuel gauge and a, it's got a mechanical oil pressure gauge. It's not hooked up, but I had it hooked up at one time because I had a low pressure issue, which ended up being a sending unit was bad on the engine. But uh, it's got a black interior swap. I made these door panels. Um, I need a back seat still for it. My kid drive me nuts about that. Um, but I mean, it's got a T56, an 01 LM7 from a Suburban. It's got a GM performance parts, uh, hot cam, stock push rods, LS6 springs. It's got racing innovation long tube headers, uh, which I plan to change out for a set of speed engineering uh, one and seven eighths long tubes hopefully soon um, it's got a three inch y pipe mandrel bent hand built by me to a single four inch exhaust out the back over the axle with a bullet muffler and a turn down on the driver's side and going out the back like factory but a single four inch exhaust and like I said it's a bullet and it's loud I mean some of you watch my videos and the car is pretty obnoxious loud and every time I think about changing it then I hop in it and drive it and it's just <laughs> it's low I mean it's it's loud but it's not that bad in the car it, it actually does not drone a lot it's loud but it's not an annoying drone it's got some rasp to it but honestly like I said it, you can pick a different RPM to drive in with the six speed which is a lot of fun but uh, really all it needs right now is a brake line fixed. I'm having issues with my electric fan. It's got a harness built by Pocket from thirdgen.org. Um, he built it many years ago. It was when he was still building harnesses with where he would mix and match. So I had a truck harness I sent him. I sent him the factory uh, body harness from the car. He made them all work. Works great. Uh, but I'm having issues with it popping relays for the fan. It's got a factory single cooling fan. It's done good, but I think it's pulling too many amps and popping them. It keeps burning up the relays, burning up the fan. I've got a set of LT1 fans over there in a, in a harness that was made to fit on my Yukon that I had. And I pulled all that out when it got totaled. So I'm going to probably try to wire that in to put the dual fans on this car. And once I do that, fix the brake line and the actual the clutch hydraulic line is running <clears throat> super close to the header and I keep having issues with it locking me out of gear after a while so I've got some heat ramp for that uh, it's got a 373 10 bolt still in it with drum brakes and I know it's a ticking time bomb I've done a lot of like five six grand clutch dumps burnout stupid stuff but it's you know holding together for now eventually it's not but uh, it's been a lot of fun um, I really want to paint the car but life keeps getting in the way as you a bunch of you know plus I've got a pile of junk <laughs> projects that keep happening but uh, it's got it does have a fourth gen plastic gas tank in the car I mean and I think that's it it's I had a tune that I worked on that was that I started well I had a mail order tune by frost in Richmond it ran okay I had some issues um, I actually Matt Happel I used one of his tunes that he did on a truck. Uh, he walked with me a lot. I had some issues with my with tuning this car. 
So he sent me a tune, and then I've done a whole bunch of changes from there and got me a lot closer to where this thing used to be, and it runs fantastic. Um, I mean, it runs really good, starts up every time. It has very little issues, you know, bucking, stalling, anything like that. Pulls clean to 6,800 RPM. I mean, it it really has done, done great for me, I've been, but it's just sit. So, But it's got 14 wheels on it, too, as you may have saw. WS6 wheels. Um, did tint the side windows myself. It's not great, but it works. But then we go to this. This turd. Bought last summer. It's a 1969 C10 short bed, two-wheel drive, step side. Not a huge fan of step sides, but it works. And the price was right. And so that's the newest project. It's more so a long-term build. I wanted some. I wanted. I've always loved these trucks. I've always wanted a '67 to '72 short bed two-wheel drive or a long bed four-wheel drive. And this one showed up. The price was right. I was able to snag it. Uh, I'll throw some pictures in. It was actually sitting in the woods, sinking into the ground. And we drug it home. And it's got. The truck was originally a 250 four-speed truck 256 cylinder four-speed it's got a factory 373 posi rear in it but it was bought for a utility company in west virginia but the truck was bought locally to me in virginia but used it for this utility company in west virginia i'm in you know the western virginia so we're it was not far away its whole life and it spent most of its life in this area uh, it was it was bought as a cab chassis with the six cylinder and the four speed. Uh, it's got the I guess we call it the dual pot master cylinder manual brakes, four wheel drum, six lug. Um, I don't know what the original color was. I know that the front cliff was changed at some point. It's got aftermarket front fenders with a horrible paint match, and the hood is a factory hood off of a green C20, which I had a set of fenders when I got the truck, which I sold. So something happened to the front end at some point, which I know the, the front grill, the grill and the bumpers got a, a dent in it. So I'm wondering if something either fell on it or they ran into a tree or whatever. But, you know, there's no frame damage or anything like that. But it's hard to tell with a 50-year-old truck. And it does have some cab rust. Um, currently it has a, a 350. I'm not sure what all the specs are on it. At least I think it's a 350. But uh, somebody, you see where the original hole in the floor is? It's actually got a Saginaw three speed with a Mr. Gasket shift it, shifter, four shifter, and it is horrible. <laughs> I mean, it goes in and out of gear and gets stuck between gears, and it's just a real pain in the ass. But, uh, anyways, the engine, I actually got it running within a week of getting it home. It had a points ignition system on it, and I tried cleaning the points, and the Pretty sure the coil is dead. I ended up ordering a China HEI big cap distributor for it, swapped in, ran a new power wire for it. Uh, a buddy of mine donated me some, you know, HEI plug wires. And what else? He came over one day, we flushed the cooling system, ran water through the engine and the radiator, blew the radiator out. It's got a different radiator in it, it doesn't belong in this truck. I don't know what it goes to. And I had a borrowed Edelbrock Rock carburetor I put on it, which was like an 850. And it had a 750 on it when I got it. But the truck's got long tube headers, the 350. It's got a single plane intake. It's an older single plane. I can't, I think it's an Edelbrock, I think, but it doesn't have what it is. But it's a single plane intake. And it, uh, but it runs really, really, really good. <clears throat> It doesn't seem to have like a large cam shaft or anything in it. Maybe a small upgraded cam, but I had the valve covers off and everything is so clean. And I do know that the last registered owner passed away in 2007. And that is not who I purchased the truck from. I actually bought it with no title and had to go through a title, abandoned vehicle title process in the state of Virginia. And so now I actually have a title for the truck that's registered to me. It's like 
it was never lost. So I have a title for it, which was pretty awesome, especially for what I gave for the truck. Um, when we were cleaning it out, I, we found all the original documentation in the glove box. I've got the original owner's manual, the uh, warranty packet with protective plates still intact, uh, all receipts for inspections and all kinds of stuff all the way back through the 80s and 70s, which is pretty awesome. I do know since 19, early 1980s, like 82 or so, it has had a V8 in it. So at some, I don't know when it was swapped, but at some point the engine was swapped. I do not believe the engine that's in it now is that old. It, I mean, it could be an older engine, but it, I do believe it has been rebuilt at some point. It has no issues with oil pressure. As you can see, I've got a pile of junk in the bed. It has no, it has very, very good oil pressure. Um, better oil pressure than any of my other junk I got which is pretty wild like it's showing like 40 pounds hot oil pressure 60 plus when you rev it uh, runs smooth um, I've actually I actually polished this one fender out just to check it out and it, it got a little bit of shine back um, but it uh it runs really good it's got some aftermarket gauges in it not all of them work but I'm gonna have to do some looking at them. The dash has been cut. I had to, I got it with no keys. I had to buy a new ignition cylinder and a key for it. Uh, they pulled the gas tank out it, to clean it and I found a bunch of holes in it. So it's currently got a two and a half gallon gas can like ratchet strapped in the engine bay. <laughs> but uh, the plan is short term with this. Um, I actually had started, I got it up on jack stands because the brakes don't work. And the plan was to build a whole new exhaust system because they had a two inch true dual exhaust system with glass packs and all the hangers were rusted out. The pipes were starting to rust through and it went straight out the back and I'll show you that here in just a second. It's got some weird custom modifications done to it with the <clears throat> tail lights molded into the fenders. It's got like a, a roll pan made with tail lights in it and <coughs> you know, reverse lights. But it's also got a French stand antenna over there, which is pretty wild. Um, but it's got long tube headers, three inch collectors, and it all neck down. <clears throat> I cut the flanges off the headers. I got V band, three inch V bands to weld on, and I had a whole bunch of leftover three inch mandrel bent pipes from other projects. So I ended up ordering two three inch in, three inch out knockoff MagnaFlow mufflers, and I started building a three inch true dual exhaust with an H pipe uh, going through the cross member. It's actually a leaf spring truck too. So this truck has leaf spring. It's not a uh, trailing arm truck. But uh, so through the cross member three inch dual exhaust, probably just gonna dump it at the axle for now. I've had it running with the muffler slipped on just to check it out and it runs, it sounds pretty cool. But then all this back whatnot happened. So it's just been sitting. Everything piled up in the bed, on the other car, all around it. I got junk everywhere as you see. But, um, so I'm hoping to get back onto that soon because I really need to get this thing out of the garage. I want to get the Camaro in here once the big truck is fixed because the Camaro is just killing it sitting in the sun. I need to get this car fixed because my daughter is like begging to go for rides in it. So I need to put a brake line on it. I want to get this moving so I can beat around town a little bit in it. Um, I'll probably do the brakes, finish the exhaust, find some used tires for it. It's got aftermarket wheels that are 15 by 8.5. I've actually currently got a 295 50, 15 on the back, and like a 205 something on the front. I don't know, some shit. But I want to get new or newer tires for it that are a little better size. The back ones actually fit really nice, but they, they won't hold air. But just get it running to where I can move it around a little bit. Uh, long term, I might mess with the, the small block a little bit, but I have a Gen 4 5.3 that I had put together for the Trans Am that I was going to boost at one time. But I've kind of decided I don't want to go that route with that car. I might later build a large cube all motor setup for the car. I mean, I really don't want to mess with all the. I mean, 
I know turbo is the way to go anymore, but I, I really, in my area, the roads aren't that great. I don't, well, all we have is eighth mile tracks locally, and I just, I don't race that much. I just want to go out and do burnouts and do stupid shit. So, I mean, I really don't need to make five, six hundred, seven hundred to the tire with a stick shift car, or I'll die. <laughs> and I don't want to wreck this car, I mean. But the truck will probably end up getting that engine. I've got a Little John Motorsports turbo cam. I may end up selling it and buying a, like a BTR Stage 3 or Stage 4 or something like that and putting that engine. Like I said, it is only a 5.3, but it's it's a iron it's an iron gen 3 with gen 4 internals so it's got floating wrist pins the heavier connection rods uh it's been gone through um, machine work po crank polish and all new bearings and i've got a set of 243 heads i'm gonna put on it and i'll probably put it in the truck and i was really wanting to put an 80e in the truck but since it's originally set up for a manual transmission I'm looking into other stick shift transmission options. Uh, T56, people want an arm and a leg form nowadays. So I'm really thinking about putting a, I was looking at a CD009 transmission doing that conversion, but then I got to looking more into the, was it the AR5 five speed they had in the Colorados. And honestly, that might be a better option for me. I've got a spare, 4L60E that came out of my big truck over there so I can rob the bell housing from that which like I said ships everywhere and I can do the modifications on that and just put the 5 speed in the truck and honestly I really like the gear ratios that are in either this the CD009 or the AR5 I think those gear ratios would work really well in a truck um, I do most of my running around town but I do want overdrive I mean I don't necessarily need the double overdrive like my car has but I mean, I think it would be a lot of fun, especially if I put like a 28 inch tire on the back of the truck. I mean, it would turn, I think I did the math the other night, like a 28 inch tire with the fifth gear and the AR5 would put me at like 2,600 RPM at 80. That's not bad. So, I mean, that's a, an option I'm really looking into now. So I might do that because it's, you can get those transmissions for like two or 300 bucks. Plus, you know, it's like $500 for the swap kit, and then you'll have a clutch. I mean, less than $1,500 for a transmission that would hold the power? Hell yeah. I mean, the T56 is nice, but I have like two grand in this T56 swap in this car, and I'm missing fifth gear. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I'll have to talk about that more later. But, this video is already pretty long. If anybody wants to see anything more, any of these junkers, um, I plan to make more update videos over the next few weeks. Uh, we'll probably do a lot of filming when we do the cam swap on the truck, the big truck, the Sierra. Um, I'm not sure how much of it I'll do if I remember, but my friend's going to come over and help me. I've got some videos of his car on here. It's the white second gen that I built an exhaust on, which is now blue. And I built another exhaust, but he might be over here some with that. We've talked about making some videos. Um, we have another, I guess, a sister channel. Uh, it's called CMP Racing. I'll put a link in the bottom. Uh, we actually have a chump car race team based around from a group with my name on it. <laughs> so they run a red and blue prelude. Uh, I'll put up a link for that page if anybody wants to watch some chump racing at uh, usually at VIR. So, uh, anyways, if you, anybody wants to see any more information on any of these junkers, anything in particular, I'll try to make a video. Um, if you want to subscribe and like, that's cool. If not, you know, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm just doing this for fun right now. But because I have nothing else to do except for watch TV. So, I know it's a pretty long, lengthy video, just me talking. Uh, well, hope everybody enjoyed it. If not, like I said, Cool too.